There's the fix. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about the updates that just came out. We're talking about uh, breaking the CVG rule, um, auto versus semi-auto trading. These will all be very quick. The, the deck utility fees conversation, what the ZDEN is not, and what's to come. Let's jump right in. The updates that happened this week um, were simple, but extravagant in a way. The ZDOM 2.6, the DEX Atomics got updated, and the data division got updated. Didn't know we had a data division? Well, you do now. The ZDOM 2.6 came out, uh, pretty much just jumped right in. It wasn't a lot that it came out with. It only came out with the DEX Atomic two-hour signals. Now, I'm going to give you a word of warning uh, that we're going to be talking about this in, in ad nauseum here in a minute. Um, but what is enough, right? That, that's the main conversation we're going to have. Uh, but the design of the two-hour signals was for us to start the control process of uh, what signals were doing the best and what would our, what would our best area be to dive in for signals and for the system. Uh, ultimately enough, all of you are traders. Some of you are here because you just wanted to have uh, the automation side. You just wanted to have something trade for you, and that's okay. Just keep on the path that you're on. For some of you, you're going to be doing a little bit of both. You're going to be doing two-hour trades, one-hour trades, a little bit of everything. But keep in mind, more isn't always better. So we did upgrade with that. We also upgraded the process here of um, in the new system, if you're trading with one hour signals or two hour signals or even personal signals, now you could tell uh, we put a little uh, earmark in here for uh, a white three dots that you see on your signal. That uh, means you're, that's, a tr that's a personal trading uh, yeah, because we don't have a lot of room in here to put a lot of stuff. So we kind of had to do it in this fashion, color coding it. We color coded for yellow to be one hour signals and two hour signals to be orange. The DEX Atomics got uh, a huge, and I say huge in the, the, the idea that it, it means a lot, not that it took a lot. It took a lot. Let me tell you, every single one of these frames of, of information, each one of these variable inputs, as we call them, um, like the trade, the test has three, right? As long, short, and long and short. But when you add in three systems on a five minute, that's three. But on then on the one minute, it's six total. And, and on you add the 15 and now there's nine. And that's just there. And so every time you change uh, like a medium level, that's nine just for medium. And then 18 and then 27. And then, you know, for, for low and high. And then, oh, you got validated signals. Oh, that just doubled the system. And oh, now you only want to test on Monday. Well, guess what? Now you can. The day of the week was put in here because it was very important for us to look at like we just did this past week, what are our ramifications of trading on Saturday or, or sorry, sorry, Sunday or Friday? And we we seen, we started like the data division was created for us to be able to hunt this information out. And what better way to give them the power is to be able to isolate the day of the week. Why is this also important for the general trader as well, not just for Zidon or data, but also for you guys who are like, hey, listen, I only have Wednesdays off. So I don't, I don't want to try to just filter through all the other days that I, I won't be able to do, or maybe I just can trade Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is, a, this is a huge upgrade for you because now you can isolate that information. You can isolate the time and say, look, I can only trade on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays all day. And so I need to know what pair is doing the best at that region. And we're going to, in, in future videos in Dex Atomics, now that we have all this stuff done, and I'll talk about that here in a second too. Um, now that we have all the stuff done and upgraded, we are now starting to make the final cut videos, right? Because if I went out and made the Dex Atomics final cut video before today, I would have had to remake it again, all, all, all the videos again, because of this uh, day of the week process here. So you should all be very excited about this for you data hounds that are in here. Uh, this is really going to uh, make you very happy with uh, finding what's perfect for your time frame. Let's jump to uh, a, a process here. Um, and I'm going to ask you a question. And some of you can answer, and some of you may not know. 
Some of you may be able to say the words, but you don't understand them directly just yet. What is the, C what is the rule of CVG? Just one person, not, not, not an owner or staff member or somebody else. Maybe somebody else come out and tell me what the rule for CVG is. Well, maybe just wait a second. Is it need more money, add more trades? Nope, <laughs> it's not, right? <laughs> Go get him, Junior. <laughs> it's simple. Patience plus discipline. That's the first part of it. And we forget that sometimes that we call it the CVG rule, but there's something prior to it, and it's called patience and discipline. Patience, you're waiting for the right thing to happen. And discipline is that you're doing the right thing once it does. You can wait for the right thing to happen, but then you're like, eh, let me do something different. <clears throat> I could probably talk about Mr. Uh, somebody in the room who states, I don't trade at 1500. He's patient enough to wait to 1500 to come, but then decided, you know what? I'm going to trade at 1500 anyway, because my rule doesn't matter. <laughs> and he trades 1500. And what happens? He loses. He doesn't get to his consistency. He breaks his own rule. That doesn't mean that you can make any rule and you're always going to win. But once you do, once you find the pattern, once you find the process that you work with, stick with it. Be patient and disciplined to find the consistency. The consistency also, when we say volume, consistency plus volume, this does not refer to trades. It refers to what? Contracts. That's the biggest thing here, contracts. Not how many trades you have. David Menning, Robert, uh, Randall, all the people that have proved to us that you only need a handful of trades, five to 10, in some cases, a week to make a good living. I've proven that in the past. Many, why do you think I came up with the rule? I was trading 50, 60 times a day about 40 years ago. And I tell this story sometimes where in January, I got sick. And this is where my brother and I were working together. And I was like, I can't, I can't make it today. I can't, I can't get in and make all those trades. I'm so tired. I'm only going to trade the ones that I know really work well. We made the statement, well, we'll just trade the consistent ones and then we'll just add a bunch of volume to it and we'll get to our goal for today. And that became the moniker for everything that we had done at that point. I was so relieved at that end of the day after being sick and doing that trade, doing those just small little trades, we made more money in three trades than we did in 50. So it made sense. In the beginning, we teach you how to trade with a lot of signals and how to get in there and figure stuff out. But eventually, it has to come down to this. Speaking of which, the data division control. Now, in the data division, there's myself, there's Ron, there's Jerry, there's David Menning, and there's a few other people in there that help us uh, uh, test and, and figure stuff out in there. Between Ron, David, and Jerry, they have made a system to track the trades, track profitability, track division of delta. And with so many signals that they had the process that were floating back and forth, I finally had to get to a point where you have to kind of contain it, right? Because you could sit down and grab a million days worth of data and, and, and have, you know, okay, let's check uh, how many lows are the best. And we had to sit down and put a game plan together. This is where the upgrade came this week. We had to find the pattern. And the pattern was that we had to find by the hour what was the best of the best. Chris likes to force down my throat sometimes. Creme de la creme. By the way, it really does mean, doesn't mean, it doesn't translate as best as the best. The cream of the cream. Back in the day, the... The Royals were more of, uh, they, they were only really the ones who could afford good cream. And when you get the best of the best cream, it means that you've gotten cream and then gotten the better stuff off top of that. And that's what you have, the creme de la creme. And that's what we've done here with the signals. We've gone back through. Now, what you had this past week was decent. 
should have been decent at times with cutting off the wings of Friday and Sunday and doing all that stuff. But we, we noticed a very powerful variable inside that we didn't realize how in, insignificant it was until it reared its ugly head is that there was still way too many. There's too many signals. I think in the overall data, if we let it trade for the entire week, it was something like 60 plus signals. And even when we cut the wings off and we did from, uh, and I even let it go too late. I was telling people, all right, yeah, 10, because I, I listened to other people and I was like, listen, I really originally didn't want to trade Friday at all. Like midnight, cut everything off, turn everything off and go to sleep and just wake up the next day. Don't trade Friday at all. Now with the DOW, the day of the week uh, system in there, we found what signals are best for Sundays and, and Fridays. And we'll talk about what the, the process and how we do that here. The level is now isolated into 40 of the best signal hours throughout the day. We lost a couple hours. There's a couple hours during a day that didn't meet the pattern we wanted. And what the pattern was, was that it had to be able to deliver a seven plus delta consistently. So our control of these 40, 40 signals throughout the day will have a seven plus control on it or seven plus delta on it. Meaning that it can, in that 90 days, it has yielded seven plus delta per each one of those hours. And I want you to realize the ramifications of this. Our previous was four. You may not think that's a lot, you know, you may not think seven is a lot, but that's seven times 40 possibility. Okay. Now, we knocked these down from 185 signals down to 40. We now have taken that 40 signals and created a webhook from our own Dex Atomics. Now, I want you to realize this. We're not sitting in some back room using something else. We didn't invent something different that we use compared to what you use. We use the same thing you do, the Dex Atomics. You could actually, if you went and did the work and did all the legwork, grabbed all the data, figured out high, low, medium for every single hour, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, whatever, you could do the same exact thing. And that's where the reality, the transparency, and the honesty in the system itself holds itself to its own highest standard. When the owner of the company, when the elites of the company, the VIPs, the, the, the Zidon high elite, whomever they are, have the same abilities as the people that can just go buy the Dex Atomics and go figure it out yourself as well. You can trade. You can figure out stuff at the Dex Atomic level and even the Dex Atomic X level, but you're going to need to put a lot more paperwork down. Now, the control in any good testing process, you have a control, a public facing result, okay? And the data collection and prioritization of the system on a weekly basis. So the control is always gonna be trading these 40 signals. If they fall below the seven plus, they're still gonna be traded and, and, and valued on the control, which you won't see, it's gonna be set to private. The control set to private, but what's gonna be facing outward is a seven plus system. So every single signal that you get during a week, went into the week with a seven plus on the Delta. And at the end of that week, whatever has a seven plus, if anything came off and then made decent in the control for that week, then we put it back on again. And we play with that control as our marker on what's doing good and not so good. And if we find that it's best to have it at a two week margin, then we'll do that. And if it's best to have it at a three week, we'll find that out as we go. But keep in mind, you have a full data division, some very smart people and, and knowledgeable people about the system and what we're doing and about data control, data collection and, and, and 
and pivot tables and all the things you need that you would have to do yourself if you weren't in this system. The level systems will no longer go to 10, but go to L4 for now. We'll still have it that you can put 10 down, but you're not going to get anything that's going to say L5, and it is all going to be to L4. The reason why we've done this was that it made no sense whatsoever to have an L5 in there trading, even though that it was successful with up to L10 and all that kind of stuff, and you had a positive control in it. It made no sense to do that because anything below an L4 in our current system before we change or before we're changing it this week meant that you would drop down to a D4 because our, our, our Delta four was the, was the highest or the lowest that we would go. We didn't want to have D threes and stuff in there. They didn't happen to establish themselves yet. Well, we found out over the past several weeks, looking at the data profusely that it was all about the seven and above. And you can thank Ron and Jerry and David for that. This means if you trade an L4, you should at least have $2,200 in your account. Now, legally, I can't tell you to put that exact amount in. But what I can tell you is that if you're risking, if the numbers work out right, if you're risking $555 for every trade, if you're trading $45.55, you're risking $55. That means for every single trade, that's $550. If you're trading an L4, there's a possibility at one time four trades could come up. That's if you're just trading it on auto. You just set and forget. There's a couple of times a day that you get an L4. Now, sometimes you may not get an L4. Doesn't mean you should be changing how many contracts and everything. Remember, consistency is important for you, but so is the incremental crawl, and we're not, which we're not talking about in this video today, but you'll find out what that is inside. Most of you already know who it is. So you guys, this is the meeting for all of you. Now, the signals themselves, like we just talked about, have three parts. One is called the control. This is where we take the alerts and we make them private. And that's what we grab our system from to be able to tell you uh, what the signals are for that week. There's also a process that the signals now, this is one, its own alert, right? So the Dex Atomics has these 40 alerts in them. And then we also create another set of 40 alerts that goes to the Discord unit. Why don't we just put them all together? Well, because we have to keep them separate for security. So the Discord will get its signals. Now, some of you have seen over the past week that the signals themselves didn't match up from like there was five in here and then there was seven over here. And, and that's, that was explainable. It was easy to explain it because the Discord system, for some reason, well, I know why the reason was, because when we built the bot for the, uh, that, that takes that webhook and shoots it into Discord, it was only letting us interject five at any one time. And we couldn't find out the reason why. What we, we did find out was that the Discord system itself would only allow uh, five webhook interjections at any one time. And I trying to find a way to increase that. But now we don't even need to bother with it because you won't go past an L4 anyway. Okay, so that's why they were different from in there. Uh, we also then have the Zedon system, which is another 40 alerts into that system. Um, that go into our Zedon system. So when you select the Discord signals, or, or I'm sorry, the Dex Delta signals in your Zedon, that's what you're choosing, those 40 alerts. The 40 alerts that go into Discord and the 40 alerts that go into Zedon should be exactly the same. We're gonna be doing this process in 90 day batches. That means that the next nine weeks, and I know that's not 90 days, but we have some previous results. They're going to be mixed with back test results and forward test results. Okay, and we're going to have a results page that's forward, that's public facing, that's going to have that mix of forward and back testing results. Okay, and as each new week comes, we're going to knock off one of the weeks of uh, back test and put in that forward test until ultimately and eventually it will be all forward testing and no back testing. And why is that important? Because prior to using all back testing is theoretical, where forward testing is what? Actual. And which would you prefer? Me personally, actual. Let's have a quick talk here. Um, 
Let me back up here. Does anybody have any questions at this time about what I just discussed? Yeah, Max, um, quick question. How does that um, break down uh, between two hour and one hour? Or do they overlap or, you know, um, the, the 40 signals? Well, the 40 signals are only the one hour signals at the moment. We haven't even begun yet to test the two hours completely. But we are going to be doing the same thing with the two hours. It may not be this week, but it will be soon. Uh, well, it'll probably be this week, but it won't be intimate or um, implemented until the beginning of next week. But let me discuss a couple of things with you. And it's a good question, Thor. Thank you. Is that one hour and two hour signals can actually conflict with each other. So don't think, well, if the signals are doing great there, they got to be doing great over here. And I could trade one and two hours. If you have a process that you like trading two hour trades, trade them, but just trade them. You know, if you're going to trade them both, go grab a Dex Atomics and, and get it on with, with your own bad self, okay? Because let's just say that you had a one-hour signal for a Euro, a Euro USD, right? But an hour prior to a, on the odd hour, a signal fired for a Euro USD sell where the market has changed a little bit and now it's going in the bounce direction. So you can actually get a Euro USD fire on a two-hour bracket for a sell, but then on the one hour, you could have it for a buy. And if they went in together at the same time, they would cancel each other out and you would actually get out of the trade at the top of the hour. Make sense? So you have to keep that in mind when, the, when your variables are trading at a two hour and a one hour level, they are two different mentalities. One has a, a slower pullback, a less chance of losing in the last couple of seconds. But right around in the middle of the trade, there's a lot of volatility. And if they do get picked up, there's a lot of stuff to say in for that. So I want you to keep all of it. Thanks for asking. Anybody else? Great. Let's move on. Auto versus semi-auto. Now, auto being the Zedon system, turned on, clicked on, and set and forgot, right? There are too many var variables to discuss in here on what's good and what's bad. The pros and cons are both very close to what you, you know, it really does come down. Like I say in here, it depends on you, right? I suggest you try a little bit of a both and find out what works for you. And uh, the biggest one for me is knowing that if I'm trading with the auto system, fully auto on Zedon, I have to give up more control. Right. I have to. I have a lot less control in the auto than I do in the semi-auto, where I go to a page and I look at the, the signal coming out and I look left. Even putting it into Zedon manual mode gives you a lot more control because it gives you a time to go, let me have a look at this. Let me look at the result sheet from last week and see how many trades fired off for the Euro USD and was it good enough? You start utilizing this tool mentality. Zedon Auto isn't the save all. And in fact, and sometimes it could be a detriment. You're dependent upon it. You go to bed at night. You wake up in the morning. You got some losses. You got some wins. You may be excited. I don't know how many times I got up in the middle of the night to come check my stuff. Right? But it also comes with time. That if, you, if, you, if you're making the time, if, you're ma if it's making you the money, if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing for you, and you're using it correctly, then trade for auto. Chris uses it in a little bit different way too. He turns it on with manual while he's sitting in front of it to grab the signals and he goes over and he looks and he sees, he looks left a little bit on some of his stuff. It also has the trading view system in it, all that kind of great stuff. But remember, auto means less control. Semi-auto means more control, and it's simply just that. Everything else is just what you feel you want it to be. This sounds like a very rude statement, but if you want more signals, <laughs> go get them at the Dex Atomics. That system is the best system I've ever built in my entire life. That's, that's 3,600 radio station mentality. That's all kinds of stuff, server-based security systems, everything. It is the best I've ever built. And I think that the company is going to thrive just completely just with people trading the FX Atomics. It's not even about the Zedon anymore. 
with that, let's have a conversation. Um, and it's, it doesn't really pain me because I know out of how many people we have in our network, there's only a handful of people that force this conversation to be something that is um, upsetting. Okay, the DEX utility fees conversation. If you're a founder, if you're a lifetime, if you're pre-launch, right? A year or so ago, I put out a video that said, you know, it was a sales video to sell people, to buy stuff from us. And I didn't lie. I didn't cheat anybody. I didn't rip anybody off. I didn't change my mind right at the last second and just take everybody's money. We said, if you come inside, you end up buying in, it's like the system will be kind of free for life for you. It's like being free for life, right? We talked about you don't have to pay another membership fee ever. And when I made that statement, we didn't know what we didn't know yet. We thought, okay, we're making a bot. It's going to have a, a signal system in it. And the signal system, will, just like we did before, like we had before with the signals, the signals were already there. The signals prior to didn't take us anything because, well, they did. <laughs> it took a lot of time for me to build and create, and it cost us a lot of money, but it was static. It was static because I had already built the signals. It was static because it already had a server that cost a certain amount. It was static was because I didn't need anybody else to run the system. I was running it myself. So there was no real other outside control of, of money or what was coming into the company or, or what it cost to have the Zidon run those signals. It was no, what they refer to as no skin off my nose. What I didn't realize was how bad that statement was. As we got into the year, after we sold a lot of the pre-launches, after we sold, I mean, there was like 40, 40 or 50. And as we sold those pre-launches, we sold that lifetimes, um, as we sold those processes, it was, you would have to not pay for a lifetime or a, another membership. Uh, and it was like being free for life, direct quote. But I don't regret making that statement because we went through a lot last year in 2020. In April, we closed everything down. You guys heard this story. We've closed everything down. We didn't charge anybody anything for three months. Where do you think money was made from? Where do you think we got money to keep the servers and the sites and the systems? And we're, this is a business. We're a business in this network, and we survived a pandemic. We're still surviving it today. Not only did we survive, we flourished in the progress of building a product and a system that is successful. Now, what does the utility system pay for, right? Not even the membership system, the utility system. It pays for customer service to answer all questions because we have Thor and myself and uh, Chris in there answering questions, and even Paul in Discord and doing things like that. It pays for us to be able to do that. And if you don't think we deserve to get paid for doing our job, then you're in the wrong company. It pays for technical service, which means that all the systems will always work. And when they don't, we band together as a, as a core group and we get it fixed. Unlike before to where I had to wait and I had to go find out and I had to get a programmer to go and go look at it. And if Matt wasn't available, I had to find somebody else or if, you know, those kind of things. Now we have full-time people on board with this process. They're intuitive to the system and where it is and what it's doing. Troubleshooting, figuring stuff out. Where's stuff broken at? Where, why doesn't this work? Let's go figure it out. Let's test it here. That's what the technical service does. If you're paying attention during this webinar so far, this meeting, the data division has paid for itself in spades. It is probably one of the best decisions that I did with asking Ron and Jerry and David to go into that division and make it what it is right now, because that data division will always make sure the signals and the systems are consistent. The technical service made the DEX Atomics what it is. That's including myself, the Zedon system by Matt. Those two programs right there together are a force to be reckoned with, but without good data underneath it, it's not there. Do you think those guys need to get paid? Absolutely. Research and development, always making sure it is better. Now, if we didn't have research and development, 
when we released the Zedon 1.0 whatever, you would have just got that. A simple system that had a scraping mentality that just did something that one thing to another. <laughs> It took one signal and went to your email, or it took a, a signal that we put in and just sent it over. You didn't have any filters. You just grabbed every single thing that came over. I can give you that. We have a version of that. If you want that, you could just get that. But, you know. But the idea when we said what we did before was to make sure that we had money to be able to pay for the things to be built. What we didn't realize, okay was that there were so many other things available that we needed to make sure that we had on to make this not only profitable at the time we were selling it, but forever. And with this plan, we have now something that we can not just be proud of, but be reliant on. It also pays for the servers that we make here and the security that we know that all your stuff is safe. In fact, we had a security issue with somebody who had six or seven Zedons firing off with different emails. Oh, no, it was the same email, but lots of different IPs. And it's okay. You know, we know that you, some of you have like one that's on your desktop and another that's on your VPS or one that's at your work on a workstation or what have you. We know. But when you have six... In some case, the one the one IP having 10, because they just hit download and download and download and activated them all on different devices and tried to get as many possible. You're pushing your luck. We see it all. Whether or not we allow you to live with that for a while, <laughs> that's that's on us. There's one person here who owns like six versions or six uh, of the licenses. Crazy. Bought them all. Earned them all. That's not fair to that, that person who had to pay for them all where somebody comes in and just gets one and duplicates it all over the place. And trust me, we know. I've had people write us and say, hey, look, I lost it on this one. I got to redownload it, put it on here. They're letting us know. Please keep doing that. Don't take advantage of that process. Lastly, the membership fees that you pay, if you're not a lifetime or a founder member or a pre-launch member, pays for everything we built for up to this point. And if you don't think we deserve that, then again, you're in the wrong spot. Myself, Thor, Paul, Vivian, Chris, and now Jerry, David, and Ron, we've all vested ourselves into this program, into this network. And if it was just us, I'm pretty sure we could just make it work with that as well. But all of you that are here in this meeting right now have also vested your time and money to here. And would I not be doing justice if we let this thing fail because we can't afford to keep it? We deserve our time to be paid. We also deserve the, the machine to continue to grow. So if you're a new member, you'll pay membership fees plus utility fee. If you are a founder or a lifetime, you'll pay only the utility. That's it, simply. You wanna remind me of my deal with you back in the video and, and say that I'm breaking a promise? That's completely up to you. But remember, my retort simply going to be, stuff changes, things happen. You can choose to, to do that. I'll give you the process of the Dex Atomics and give you lifetime membership to it. If you don't want that, you can sell it. Go go do what you got to do to go sell it. Like I've said in the one video before, I'll help you as much as I can. But one, you better be respectful when you do it. Two, I may not have the time or energy to be able to do it because I'm, I'm burning the candle at seven different levers. So please be patient, but also know that I really do want you to be successful. And if you can't afford to do it, you need to sell your membership and do all that stuff. Okay but it's not something I'm doing solely for you. Let's talk about what the Zedon is not when we're coming to a close here. What is what the Zedon is not? The Zedon is not a bot. That's it. <laughs> or a save all or a cash machine or a set and forget or a bot. I know I said that one, but it's not a bot. 
Now, in closing, before I do the in closing, at this point, does anybody have any questions, statements, ahas, anything they need to bring to the table? Hey, Max. Yeah. This is Chris. Just a, a note about the uh, the well, the bot or the, the ZDAN. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things in, in nuclear power is, uh, and I've mentioned this before, been mentioned for a while, but uh, the more automatic operations you have, the 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 better the better it is because then you have less operator error. However, with the with the with the ZDAN, generally what it's going to do for those who don't really feel necessarily comfortable with trading or are emotional, and and during that time where you find yourself you're not confident, uh, but you're attempting to build that patience and discipline that you were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. you know it's just the the you you know you may want to I'm not recommending this but it's just something that will give you a little, maybe perhaps a little bit more, more confidence, uh, not running it all night and that sort of thing, but there's just, uh, just the idea that there's less emotion and it keeps you sitting on your hands rather than going in and change. Oh no, did I make the right trade? So on and so forth. So it's just a, it's just an idea about automatic operations versus, um, emotional or operator error. That's all. Absolutely. I, I appreciate that, Chris. You know, to touch on that, Chris is, battled back and forth with that operation of to fully automate or to semi-auto. And I think he has a good blend of that. There might be a time when he might relinquish more control at certain times after things have been proven to be more proficient. But as far as efficiency goes, I think we kind of got it down at that point. Anybody else? Yeah, Max, uh, what, are, what are the uh, membership fees? Depending on the product itself. Uh, the, if, you, if you're a member, then you've already paid uh, the membership fees um, on like the Dex Atomic, I think is like 150 bucks a month. Dex Atomics, I think it's like 150. For the Zedon, full control auto is $350. That's total, that's with utility fees. So it's 175, 175. So there, there is a lot. If you're not paying fee, whatever you're paying in, in fees right now, this moment, if you're a member, uh, we've looked at everybody. So unless we've contacted you, unless we've contacted you, you might just be fine. If you have a question about your particular one, let's have a private conversation. Everybody's rule is different. Some of you have been able to do a lot. Some of you have been able to not. And we've made deals with a lot of people, different in different fashions. All right. I hope that I answered you. I, I, it's a pretty big, broad question. You can also go to the pricing page, forward slash pricing, uh, and see what they are right on any one of those pages. It's in there as well, as far as what the public facing are. So if you're watching this video and you're unsure, go to the pricing page. And if you need to make a deal, write us. That's the other good thing is that we're the owners and we can make decisions like that. Anybody else? Okay. In closing. The past couple of months for me have been very tough. I burned the candle at both ends, burned through a couple of candles, a couple of packs, a couple of cases of candles in that case. I'm looking forward to being able to trade just with what we have right now. Hang on one second. <clears throat> Excuse me. That got snuck right up on me. Bless you. Thank you. But what makes it worth it is when I look in the room and I see people who, who are trading, who are taking opportunities to further themselves in their trading life, who, yes, make mistakes, who, yes, sometimes knee jerk and get out of something before they should have that. Yes, that there may be a little bit of impatience at times, but you're trying, you're figuring out, you're trusting. Take in a solace that we're transparent and we have 
just as much at stake, if not more, than most of you here, as far as the owners and the vested partners go, because we have staked everything we have into this program. And the program is not about a one chance Molly, right? Not, not the, the throw it up in the air, hope it ends in the end zone someplace. It is a true statement of always moving forward. Never giving up and never giving in is a statement that I've lived by for many, many years. Now, in some cases, you got to kind of let go, if you will, or you're going to break your entire rig. And you got to protect yourself. There's certain things we have to let go. But as the overall, like I told my kids when I was teaching them how to swim, never give up and never get in. Give in. Get to the wall. Get safe. Get out of the water but don't give up because once you give up, there's really no going back. You're always going to give up. Stay strong. Now, not giving up doesn't mean going all in and throwing it all to the wall. Okay. You have to make the efforts to know when is your, when is your best. So, I'll answer. I have one more question uh, by David, and I'll and I'll and I'll finish up here. Uh, David asks uh, Mac, quick question. Next week we'll start the forty signals. We'll have at least seven delta. Yes, absolutely. Next week starts that time. We're going to be putting them all into the system. It doesn't mean throw a bunch of contracts down on each one just because they're doing seven delta. It means play it patiently. You have issues with payments, if you have issues with money, if you have other stuff, make sure your contact isn't talking to us. Our goal is to get you all profitable over the next 90 days to be all profitable because I'd rather have, I don't know how many people are in this room right now. There's only like 14 people in this room because I've only invited a handful of you. But those that are watching this, you'll be in months, uh, good company if you join at this point. We'll probably use parts of this as a sales video. But the concepts for everybody that's here right now, and my final statement here, is that the people that you have decided to work with are never giving up at this process. And we're always moving forward, building out the systems, what's coming for the Zedon, what's coming for the Dex Atomics is just straight how to you know how the how to videos or or getting the alerts in and and how to how to best data control that from people who are really good at data control like Jerry and Ron and David um as an as an update we're going to be putting out a um how many signals have fired for the week and what the success rate was and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Jerry's putting the last of it up in there. If you're not sure, go jump into discord. Uh, and there's, there's, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, so that means no USD JPY next week. Well, no, it doesn't mean that it means that there's, there's going to be, <laughs> and I don't know if that was a joke or not, but uh, there's, there's probably going to be some somewhere but it's only going to be the best of the best for that hour where before we would have a USD JPY with a moniker four for Delta in there. So those were losing it's going to be a lot less signals, but what do we say about signals, right? It's right. Sorry. Right here. This is it. This is the moniker for it all. So if you think you need more signals, there's only one statement I got for you too, and that's that. Go hit the Dex Atomics. All right. If nobody else has any other statements, any ahas, or anything else you want to bring into the table, I appreciate you all. We'll be back up on Sunday night with a lot of stuff coming out. Um, as far as signals go, there's a lot more training on the way. We'll be doing these, these meetings and webinars. Uh, we'll also be doing some um, account consultations. Okay. If you don't have live on, then we have some, uh, we have some stuff to uh, work on getting you into that process. If you have live on and you're not doing so well or something's happening, then we got to talk. We got to look, we got to see. Okay. 
Thanks a lot to my partners, to my family, my friends. We'll see you all next time. And of course, as always, trade well.